After lackluster performance in 2022, recently gold stocks have started to perk up. In fact, the TSX gold sector trading around the highest level since the spring of last year and is up 40 percent from the bottom. But our next guest thinks there's still plenty of opportunity to pick up some high quality gold mining companies. That's our focus today in Hot Picks. We've got John Ng, president and CEO of Maison Placement, joining us. Thanks so much for being with us. Before we get into your picks, let's just talk about the gold environment. What's driving it today? It gets linked to things like the U.S. dollar, like real inflation. What do you see as the fundamental factors right now for gold? What's bothering everybody is inflation and interest rates. And both of them are sky high, but they're going to go a lot higher. The problem is, is that we're focusing on the debt limit, for example, in the United States, that America's debt has come up. It's the debt that's the problem. And debt has come about from all the spending. During the pandemic, we had free money. And during this free money, we had the crypto boom. We had a bunch of asset booms. But now that interest rates have moved up, the reality is, is that things aren't as free as they were. So what's happened is that this the, sort of the swamp has drained, and now we see the ugly frogs. Now we're seeing the problems in the United States. And the problem in the United States is that their debt is not only too high, it's at record debt. So the problem is for the Americans is how are they going to pay that? And now they are fighting wars, wars on the climate, wars, geopolitical wars, wars on technology, and a cold war with China. And China is the banker to the world. So they're kicking sand in the face of China. And for all whatever reason is, is that America's debt problem they now owe a third of their debt to outsiders, including the Chinese. So this is crystallized in this environment of higher interest rates, mm -hmm. and now America's debt is the problem. Okay, so that's uh, your fundamental view, and I think um, ha has always been one of the reasons that you've looked at this sector. You put it into practice, though, uh, by investing in some of the gold miners, because you don't just hold uh, you know, the bullion and wait for perhaps some of those chips to fall. Let's talk about where you're finding those opportunities. Your first one is Agnico Eagle. What do you like there? Well, Agnico Eagle has grown initially through a great mine, La Rome mine. But uh, of the last few years, uh, Sean Boyd has acquired uh, the assets out there. And he's dusted them off and he's made them even better. Metal Bank, he, he uh, ended up uh, with the Nunavut assets. Uh, with uh, Osisco, they were able to buy Canadian Malartic. And so that growth, and then they, they've, they've really improved the mines, have made uh, Agnigal one of the go-to uh, mines. Yamana yeah, Gold is uh, one of the, our other major uh, acquisitions. And acquisitions, as you know, uh, can be a bit of a dirty word in uh, the mining space because they can be prone to issues, integration issues. But it sounds like you're looking at somebody who's developed a reputation and a track record that you trust. Execution is very important, and it's easy to buy things. It's hard to really dust them off and improve them. In Yamana's case, they slapped on too much debt to buy Malartic. Agnigal Eagle used shares, and, and, and so they were, that didn't uh, haunt them. The reality is, is that looking ahead, gold is not only precious, but there are very few mines in the world that are being discovered. Are you looking for low-cost producers, though, in case your gold thesis doesn't pan out? You still want these companies to make a go of it, and does this fit the bill? One of the key is cost, and Barrick, for example, is a low-cost producer. Their assets, their mines, they have a, an array, the best array of what they call tier one mines. Those are mines that are going to make money no matter what the gold price is, and they're throwing off a lot of cash flow. The other one is, is Lundin Gold. Yeah. Lundin, for example, it's producing gold at 10 gram material per ounce, and that's very valuable. That's, in fact, the richest in the world. So no matter what the gold price, they're going to continue to make money. Now, uh, let's spend a beat well, uh, first on Barrick, and then we'll get back to Lundin. With the rally that we have seen, uh, you know, Barrick has outperformed, uh, you know, the broad kind of TSX. I'm just seeing how it's done relative to gold um, so far this year. It's outperforming um, the, the underlying commodity. Mm. How do you think about valuation, whether things get too stretched or not? Well, 
the gold stocks have done so well in the last few weeks, and they are sort of due for a correction. But my expectation is for a $2,200 gold price. And so that means that these gold miners are going to make a lot of money. The problem for the gold mining industry is not a lot of new money has come in. Mm. And in fact, the institutions, they're still licking their wounds from playing crypto and everything else. Like, they haven't realized that the gold stocks are the best buy. They are low cost. They're on a valuation basis. In fact, it's cheaper to buy ounces on Bay Street, which is why you've had these acquisitions, than to go out and explore. It takes mm. 10 years to go out and explore and find a mine and build it. And so the reality is much easier to buy something. The problem is, is that there's not that many great gold mines to buy. Well, let's spend a minute on Lundin because it has rallied. It's outperformed, uh, you know, gold, gold stocks and Barrick and Bay Street uh, and a bit of Wall Street is, is largely neutral uh, on the stock based on that. What would your pushback be to that? Well, I think some of the portfolio managers really don't like the idea that it's a single asset mine. Mm. They kind of like to have an array of different assets. But when you have one of the richest gold mines in the world where you can make money at any uh, price pretty well, and the reality is, is that they are earning, they're generating so much capital, they're retiring their debt, this is, will be a dividend producer. Last uh, question, only 20 seconds. A possible takeout candidate? Well, I think Lundin is probably one of them. I think you've got to look at the mid-tiers, mm. a group of stocks. The trouble is, is that nothing is that cheap. 